Yo, Steel Mills, what's the deal, man? Yo, I just dropped my kids off at school. I got to hold it down for the next two days. School days, that is, because it's Friday today, man. But, um, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, my wife is out of town, so I'm on daddy duty full time this weekend, man. But peep game, man, we got to get into this shit, man, and that's, um, David Adelaide and Fabio Wood, man, listen. This is why, <laughs> this is kind of why British boxing is getting to a point where it's, 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 it's starting to usurp the, you know, the popularity and not just the popularity, but the talent pool in America because of what just took place yesterday at the weigh-ins at the Tyson Fury and, um, Francis and Ghana way in, man. I fucks with David Adelaide. I ain't even gonna cap, bro. Like, usually I don't like all that extra out ass tough guy shit. But I, I don't know, man. I don't know why. I don't know what made me say, yo, I'm fucking with dude. I, I fucks with him on that. I don't know. I think it was just kind of, you know, how he walked up on him, you know what I'm saying? He just kind of like thugged on that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it just put me in the mind, like, just the, the whole demeanor, you know what I'm saying? Just the, the sway from side to side, how niggas get, when it's about to go down up here, how niggas get down, you know, they screw their face up like that and all that shit. They get to, you know, side to side move me. He says, shut your mouth, boy. Shut your mouth, boy. You know what I'm saying? Just like, just you know what I'm saying? Just banging on him like that, you know what I'm saying? It was just like a straight up, just, it was, it was a swagger about him while he was pressing, dude. It was a swagger about him, you know what I'm saying? It was like some, you know, some gangster shit. Like when shit finna go down up here, nigga, it just, it really just put me in the mind state of like how I done seen drama go down. You know what I'm saying? How nigga, you know, just even in my neighborhood, when they just, how niggas just, you know, they get on that. When motherfuckers say I get on that, the body language is gonna somewhat let you know, like, all right, your homeboy really on that type time right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, shorty ain't playing. She really on that right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a demeanor about you. Well, how you, you know, it ain't all, you know, it go down in the UK. I get that. It, you know, it go down everywhere. In every country, no matter how prosperous the country is, it's an underbelly within that country. It's a lot of, motherfuckers get poked up a lot out there, you know what I'm saying, in the UK. It ain't as much gun busting, because I think guns is illegal out there. I could be wrong, I don't know. Or, you know, the laws for it may be a lot more strenuous than it is up here. But just the nature, the nature up there of, you know what I'm saying, the gun violence out there, it just isn't as amplified as it is here in, a, in North America or just America in general, because it's, you know, you got Central and South America and Mexico as well. But just how he was banging on this dude. Shut your mouth, boy. I don't know if that was his homie he was talking to or what. I don't know if that was uh, Warley's homie he was talking to. I don't know who the fuck that nigga was he was talking to. But yeah, he just walked up on dude. And it worked because it got the attention of Warley. It worked. But just how he just walked, you know what I'm saying? The rock on him, just how he was just walking up on him. It was, you know, it was, his demeanor was just like, yo, I, you know, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't finna bark. I ain't finna, you know what I'm saying? Scream at the top of my lungs to, you know, draw all the attention to this situation right here. So I can't get to you the way that I want to get to you. Nah, ain't none of that. Shut your mouth, boy. Oh, shit. Shut your mouth, boy. Shut your mouth, boy. He was just banging on this thing. I'm like, yo, it really, it just really put me in the mindset of like some homegrown shit. You know what I'm saying? It just, it really just put me on, I, it just like I said, the body language, man. When motherfucker get on that shit, man, it's just a certain type of bravado about it. When he like, nigga, it's a bitch, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like if he'd have been on that shit like that, you know, because that's how niggas get up here too when they get on that. You's a bitch, nigga, on my hood, nigga. Fuck you talking to, nigga. They'll get doing all that, you know, that all that jerky jerky shit with their head and their body just get real rigid. And they on, you know, all that shit, you know, just it, it just really just I don't know, man. He just really about embodied his nigga shit in that moment. In that moment. Until you heard him speak, you would have thought he was a nigga from here. But that shut your mouth, boy. Like, I was like, oh shit. I don't know how many times I watched that clip yesterday, bro, but I was like, yo, I'm fucking with that. I'm fucking with that, my nigga. Like, that was like that was, that was some gangster shit right there. Bro. I got to be real. I got to be real. But that's why 
British level talent is, you know, in the next 10 years, that Euro bum, uh, 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 um, that Euro bum talking point is going to be out the window because the skill set is going to be, they're going to produce too much talent over there from that side of the pond for you to just say, to just be, just be dismissive of somebody because they're European. Nah, my nigga. And this is why they consistently fight domestic level talent. They strike while the iron is hot. They strike right up while the iron is hot. So I ain't got, you know, just, we ain't marinating this fight. We ain't over marinating the fight. We ain't, you know, we not goddamn, um, we, we, you know, we, nah, bro, ain't, ain't none of that shit, bro. That's the biggest problem in North America. And this is why boxing here is starting to not necessarily take, well, yeah, take a back seat. Because even when you, you know, just the undercards be stacked. They be stacked. Over there, on you know, you'll see the you'll see the female fighters get in there, man. You know, um, you'll see. I mean, oh, fuck, what fight was it? David Adelaide was on the undercard for Tyson Fury. Just all of their homegrown fighters, uh, uh, Tommy Fisher and all them. The fighters that that audience is accustomed to seeing, they're throwing them on undercards. They're throwing them on undercards, so they already have the you know they've already garnered the attention of the public, and people are clamoring to see them fight. So you put them on the fight, you put them on the undercard, and that shit gonna sell like hotcakes. And when you do that, you get situations like the rise of British talent over there, whether it's the females or the males. You dig what I'm saying? It's dope, man. It's dope, and it's working. So they decided to put this fight on the undercard of Francis Ngannou versus Tyson Fury, and it's gonna be the co-main event, which is smart. That's smart. That's smart. And I digs it. You dig? I like just, you, you look, you know, look at, you know, with Tank, man, there's no reason why Tank should not be. Why is Frank Martin needing to cross the other? Well, now, I'm not mad at, cross, you know, crossing the other side of the street or nothing like that. But I'm not mad at in-house fights neither. But. I get mad at in-house fights if you're just going to intentionally keep a fighter in-house when the better competition is over there on the other side of the street. That's when in-house fights become problematic. So you got Frank Martin and Tank Davis over there on the same side of the street. Why the fuck ain't them niggas got in the ring and mixed it up, brody? Just don't make sense. That's when it becomes, you know, just... You got time for Isaac Cruz and Leo Santa Cruz, but not Frank Martin. Like, come on, my nigga. But just that's the goofy shit that I'm talking about. That's what that's the goofy shit that I'm talking about. You dig? It's just you, you know, just I don't know, just the marketing and just how the matchmaking over there is a bit, it's just it's shoddy, and not just not just in, you know with the PBC, but just on a multitude of shows over here, man. They'll put so much money into the main event that the co-main and, you know, all the other undercards and prelim fights are sleepers, bro. It's like, man, like, nigga, y'all couldn't do better than this. Y'all couldn't do better than this. You dig? Like, it just, it's like, yo, people don't even start getting, they don't even start tuning into the fights until the co-main event. And even depending on the co-main event, it's like, man, I don't know. Man, I ain't, nah, I'm good, bro. I don't, you know, I like shit. Cabrera and goddamn Isaac Cruz, like, come even with Adam Lopez and Oscar Valdez, it was like, man, bro, like, good fight, but it's like, yo, y'all couldn't get goddamn. Well, I, yeah, I don't know, but um, Jermaine Franklin, y'all couldn't find someone of that out, you know, to get him, you know, to put him on it. Like, come on, man. So what they're doing over there is dope and it's commendable, man. So all that all that narrative, that, that Euro bum narrative, that shit about to be dead. They're doing good work over there. They're doing the Brits are doing good work over there. They're doing great work. I love it. I love it. So I'm 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 real I'm I'm excited about that. I ain't about to buy the fight or nothing like that because I can't buy the fight and you just if I say, hey yo, man, I'm 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 pouring this directly into the pot of Wardley and um David Adelaide. I don't get that choice. For me to put in on that pay-per-view, I just have to say fuck it. And, you know, just put Tyson put money in Tyson Fury's pocket. And I just don't want to do that. 
but I definitely do want to see the fight. And I think that's that might that's gonna be a big that's gonna be a more exciting fight than Fury and and Ngannou. Now I wasn't I didn't agree with um with Fabio Worley's last performance. I thought he got a give decision because I don't think that um I don't think Coffee was ready to go. Like I just think he was playing possum on the rope. He was still rolling up on the shots. He was countering. He was getting to the size of the straights and all that shit, bro. In the pocket, off the rope. He was doing good. He was doing good work off the rope, and the ref just gonna jump in and stop that shit. And I'm like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> now, should he have been on the rope that long? No, but so he was comfortable there. He did not see. He didn't see. You know, he wasn't panicking. He was poised and composed. And he was laying on the rope, catching a lot of shots and getting up under the shots, and he was countering as well. And he was forcing Wardley back. So I wasn't a fan of that shit. So, but you know, it is what it is. You know it. It is what it is, but if they but for them to put this, it just, I can forgive that because Fabio Worley is a good, he's a good up and coming heavyweight. He's a good up and coming heavyweight, man. I mean, shit, man. You got him. You got David Adelaide. You got Martin Bacoli. You got, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Tommy Fisher, but you know, he's a up and coming heavyweight. You got goddamn um, Frazier Clark. It's a lot of heavyweights coming up out of that, you know, coming up out of that side of the world, man. That shit is dope to me, bro. That shit is dope to me. And so for them to put this fight this early in their careers on, you know, and make it the co-main, that's going to make, that's going to, that's going to pay big dividends for, the, you know, for that, for not just those two, but for British boxing in general. So I'm excited about this fight, man. But I, like, I've been trying to find it. Shut your mouth, boy. Shut your mouth, boy. Like that nigga, that, hey, yo, man, that's some gangster shit right there, man. I'm, fuck, I'm fucking with David Adelaide, my nigga. I'm fucking with David Adelaide. My hood. Fucking with that nigga. Walked up on him, pressed him, you know what I'm saying? Real demeanor. You nigga, shut your mouth, boy. He was banging on somebody. And Fabio was like, hold on, man. Like, what's going on? Quack, get off me. Nigga pushed him. Fabio tried to get. And the spit, and even with that, the nigga who snuck him, well, you can say he snuck him or whatever. You can say that he, I, you know, I can see either side. But he had his, you know, he had Adelaide in the scope. He was blitzing that nigga. And Adelaide's man, because even at first he like hit him with an elbow and then he dropped him. I hope you got all the hands in the world. I, I hope your hands is really like that, bro. I hope they are, because I don't think that's a situation you're going to be able to escape from without him coming to rectify that shit. Now, homeboy wasn't no little dude. And clearly, he you know, clearly, he, you know, he got hands. Clearly, he got hands. He dropped he, he dropped a fucking a heavyweight. A uh, uh, uh a factor, an up-and-coming heavyweight, he dropped him, like, dead-ass dropped him. I'm like, yo, he really just dropped this nigga, bro. He really dropped this nigga. And not just dropped him, he elbowed him as well, bro, and mm -hmm. cut him open. Um, I hope your hands is like that, though, bro. I hope your hands is like that, you dig? You got the height for it. I don't know if you necessarily got the girth for it. Fabio Worley is not no little nigga, and he's not. I don't. I don't see him. Be, I, he. I don't see him giving you no pass on that one. I do not see him giving you no pass on that one, and he shouldn't. I be, hey yo man, I need that. I'll be saying that in all them press. Every time you get a, every time I get a mic in my face, the nigga who did that shit. Yeah, I need that, Brody. And you, you gonna have to come and see me, cause you got me fucked all the way up. I will be on that type time, and I bet you he will be, cause even after he got up, like he what you know he was. It's like he took it on the chin. I can't get to him like I want to get to him because everybody is holding me back. So fuck it. It is what it is. But man, my nigga, when I see you, good God, when I see you. So, man, Paul. Yeah, I'm back, my nigga. I had to run up in the gas station and grab me some um, some ice for my uh, for my drink. And I forgot my wallet at home. Now I'm pissed about that, but I still managed to get my pizza. You dig? But, but yeah, like I was saying, man, I, I, I hope, I hope you got hands like that, my nigga. I hope, I really do. I really hope you got hands like that. Cause, homeboy, I, I guarantee you, he gonna be the minute he's, hey, yeah, oh, oh, you ain't you that nigga? Ain't you the, ain't you the nigga that? Ain't you the nigga that 
and it's going on, it's going down, bro, on my mama. So, I get it living in the moment. You know, you want to hold your man down or whatever. It's understandable. It's understandable, man. But when it's too heavy, you know, when it's... I do think it was some, you know, David done pressed Warley before. But I don't think it's ever been this cynical. So it is somewhat what, you know, it's adding to the intrigue of the fight. Sometimes you got to learn what to see. Under, be under, they, you know, it's drama between the two of them, but it's also a bigger play at hand. So you kind of got to let, the, you know, sit back and let shit play out how it's going to play out. So for you to do that shit, just, you know what I'm saying, just broke up and steal that nigga like that, that's embarrassing. You, you dig? Your average man is not, cannot deal with a boxer on any level. Yeah, you know, and now not only is this not an average man, this is a, this is a, <laughs> a huge, a huge, a huge motherfucker we talking about. Six foot five, 250, 240, 230. It's a big motherfucker. You dig? His pride is hurt. I'm a prize fighter. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Usually a nigga back down. When they know, yo, man, he, hey, yo, man, he got hands. Like, his hands are certified. His hands, like, literally certified. Not just he can fight in the street, like, but nah, like, that nigga will, he in the ring knocking shit down. Nigga usually back down. You know, you, you, you brucked up and you crashed that nigga. You elbowed him and then you stole that nigga. And it wasn't like you just got a shot off on him. You dropped him. Has that nigga ever even been dropped in his career? You gonna drop that nigga at a presser, Brody? Oh, no. Oh no, 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 no. I will be pay I'm gonna be paying close attention to this shit. I'm about to watch, I'm about to get in tune with all the interviews and everything. You dig? You assaulted that man. And I don't think he's gonna do no shit like press charges. I hope he don't. You know, he's a gladiator at the end of the day. I hope at the most he be like, nah, man, hey, that, I, you, you bitch ass nigga, I need that. I want all that drama. I hope he do it like that. I hope he does, man. And if he does, I real life hope your hand game is like that. I hope you know MMA or something, because I don't know who you are. I, if you're a boxer, you clearly not on the level that them niggas is on. For you to just think you gonna, you know, for you to just, I, I don't know. I hope yo, I hope you, you you got an MMA game or something, or you know, you you know you got some matches or something. You're training in boxing or something, because I guarantee you he coming to see you about that. And I hope he. I hope you do. Add to the intrigue of the fight. So, that's all I'm feeling about it, man. Deuces.